So today we are going to start our unit on quadratics. So a quadratic function is one that has an x squared in it. So when we say quadratic, um, it's the x squared family. So you will see x sometimes in parentheses, sometimes not, but it will always have a to the power of 2. That's the quadratic family. It, it makes a parabola when we graph it. So let's see how to graph that. To start graphing a quadratic, we have, just like absolute value, a vertex. The vertex of the original parent function is at 0, 0. From there, we graph the next points. The next points on a parabola, we get by subbing in these values to our function. So if I sub in 1 and do 1 squared, well, 1 times 1 is 1. Then next, if I sub in 2, 2 squared is 4. And then if I sub in 3, 3 squared is 9. So the next one, if I wanted to sub in 4, 4 squared would give me 16. My graph only goes to 10, so I'm not going to go past 3. Okay, then we also have a... This graph has symmetry across a vertical line through its vertex. The line is currently at x equals 0. So you also need to draw the corresponding points. So the corresponding points would go left 1, up 1, left 2, up 4, and left 3, up 9. Okay, so let's draw that in. So here is our quadratic. And if we draw in over 1, up 1 on both sides, over 2, up 4, four on both sides and over three up nine on both sides. Remember, this is like the worst game ever. You always have to start back at the vertex. So over one, up one, back to the vertex. Over two, up two, back to the vertex. Over three, up three on both sides. You always start counting from the vertex. Then we can draw that in. This should look like a U. It should have a nice rounded bottom there at the vertex, not a point like the V had. So make sure to give it some roundedness down here. Um, this is a parabola, and it's um, line of, whoop, got a little crazy there. Line of symmetry is on x equals 0, which also happens to be the y-axis. What that means is I could fold it across this line and both sides would match up perfectly. Um, the domain here, the domain, if I take my pen and move it from the left side, first thing I hit is an arrow. So that means it goes forever. And I came from the left, so that's negative infinity is less than x, because domain is x values. Sorry, I should have mentioned that. And then if I move my pen to the right, the last thing I hit is up here, this arrow. So that means it'll keep going for all of positive infinity. Or you can say all real numbers. Okay, then next, if I need to find my range, which is my y values, do the same type of thing, but this time I put my pen sideways and I move up. And the first thing I hit is zero. So is this going to be all real numbers? No, because none of my graph is down here. There's no part of that u that's down here. I don't hit that u until I get to zero. Um, so it's only the value, and then if I keep going, I hit arrows. So it's only the values that are above zero. So y is greater than or equal to zero. Um, now, if this is upside down, if it is reflected over the x-axis, then it will be y is less than or equal to whatever number. Oh, something you should note. Notice that this is, zero, this is 0, and 
this is zero. Those are going to have something to do with each other in a moment. Okay. Um, next, transformations. So just like we transformed in 2, 6 and in 2, 7, we have transformations on these quadratics. Okay, so here is all the stuff that is possible. There could be negatives out here and negatives right here in front of the X and in front of this A as well. Okay, so a transformation of a shift up, down, left, or right, these things will all move the vertex. So your vertex that was at zero, zero, if you have a shift, it will change the location of the vertex. Remember the vertex is the starting point of the graph. A horizontal shift will change the location of the line of symmetry. So, oh crap. So here where I was talking about um, zeros, I don't know if I have a light on this thing, let's see. All right, let's try this. Sorry for the motion detector lights that keep going out in these videos. So when x equals zero, that's the same as the x value in this vertex. So whatever these are, they go together. So that's why a horizontal shift will change your line of symmetry. Um, reflection over the y-axis, this negative will be inside the, the, inside the parentheses, okay? And it would take our U and it would multiply the overs. So it would change it to look like uh, that. So did that anything really happen? No. This one doesn't change the look of the graph. Because since we have that symmetry, we have overs going both ways. If we flipped them and just counted one, went the other way first, it really wouldn't matter because we'd still have the other side. Now this one though, when the negative is outside the parentheses, outside the parentheses, it reflects it across the X axis. So it would have this guy becoming frowny face. Okay, so this one, you multiply the ups by negative one. So what's gonna happen on this one this is important. Anything that was up is now going to go down. And then last but not least, we have stretches and compressions. Remember stretches is when it's bigger than one, compressions between zero and one. And on these, you will multiply the ups. Okay, so this 149 may not always be 149. If I have a vertical stretch or compression, that will change it. So notice these four did not change the vertex. They changed the pattern, the over and up pattern. The over one, up one, over two, up four, over three, up nine. So those ones change the pattern. Okay, let's talk about this vertex. So anytime you have a vertex, it's going to be HK. Now notice in here it says negative H, but when I write the vertex, it's positive H. So the stuff inside the parentheses will change its sign when it becomes your X value. This outside stuff, eh, it's kind of lazy. It just keeps how it is. But the inside stuff changes its sign, outside stays the same. So for any vertex, any vertex ever, this H is important because x equals h is the line of symmetry. The line, um, sometimes Math Excel or other places call it the axis of symmetry. It's the same thing. Okay, so whatever the x value is of your vertex, that's your line of symmetry. Okay, well that's cool. Oops, that's not even on the screen. So the x value has the x value has a purpose. Does the y value have a purpose? Yeah, it sure does. The y value is the value of the max maximum or minimum. 
Now, a parabola is either going to have a maximum or a minimum. It has a maximum when it has a reflection over the x-axis. It has a minimum when it does not have a reflection over the x-axis. This one doesn't have a minimum because the arrows keep going forever. This one doesn't have a maximum because the arrows keep going forever. But the vertex is our top of this one or bottom of this one. And the y value is the value of that max or min. Okay, let's flip it. Let's learn more things. Now let's apply all that fun knowledge. So when we have um, these, they want us to give the transformations, list the vertex, describe how to graph, graph it, give the domain range and maximum or minimum. So we have a lot of stuff to do. So first, let's list all the transformations. Well, transformations are anything that is not x or the squared. Okay, so I start out after my equal sign, I have an x, that's not a transformation. This minus three is. Remember, minus three is going to shift me right three. And minus five is going to shift me down five. If you don't remember that stuff, it's right here. Inside moves right and left, outside moves up and down. We've already done it with absolute value, so I was going to kind of skip over it. Okay, so transformations, shift right, shift down. I don't see any other ones, so that means my vertex is what I can do next. So remember, it's opposite of the inside, so it says negative 3, so it's going to be 3. Outside is the lazy one. It just stays the same. So my vertex is going to be at positive 3, negative 5. Then my pattern for how, let's the vertex describe how to graph. So how to graph is my over and up pattern. So I'm going to go over one, up one, over two, up four, over three, up nine. Remember we got these numbers by squaring these numbers because it's x squared. Did I have a stretch or a reflection to change this pattern? I didn't, so this is what I'm going to do. Over one, up one, back to the vertex. Over two, up four, back to the vertex. Over three, up nine. Okay. Remember, nice, smooth, round curve nothing pointed about it. Okay, then my axis or line of symmetry goes straight through the vertex. And remember we said the axis of symmetry is the same as the x value. It's always a line, a vertical line always starts with x equals. It's x equals the x value of our vertex, so x equals 3. And then it is, oh, nope, sorry, next thing, domain. Domain is always the same for any parabola ever. It's negative infinity is less than x, which is less than infinity, or all real numbers. Every single time it's going to be that thing. So what's it going to be on this one over here? I haven't even graphed it yet, mm, but I already know what it is. Okay, every single time. Range is a little bit different. Put your pin flat, move it up. First thing I encounter is this point. On range, am I going to use the x value or the y value? Well, since range is y values, I'm going to use the y value. And it looks like since it doesn't have a reflection, it's going to be all the numbers greater than that, and that number is negative 5. Okay, next, I need to know if this has a minimum or a maximum. Since it opens up, it has a minimum, and that number is the y value of my vertex. That value is negative 5. Hmm, hmm, you think those have something to do with each other? Let's find out as we move through these if the y value of the vertex, the minimum, and the range all have something to do with each other. 
Next one, transformations on this one are I see a vertical stretch of two and a shift up one. Now this can also sometimes just be written as 2x squared plus one. Sometimes you just write it like that. Um, so my vertex on this one was at zero, zero. Remember any shifts up, down, right, or left change your vertex. I have a shift up one, so my vertex is gonna be at zero, one. There we go. Um, my normal pattern for growing is over one, up one, over two, up four, and over three, up nine. You're just gonna need to memorize that or just remember to put it in and square them. So what I'm noticing on this one though, is that this gets changed if I have a stretch compression or reflection. I have a stretch of two, so that's gonna multiply all these ups by two. So instead of going up one, I'm gonna go up two. Instead of going up four, I'm gonna go up eight. And instead of going up nine, I'm gonna go up 18. Not sure that that one's gonna be on the graph. Let's find out. So if I go over one, I need to go up two. Remember your mirror points, so on both sides. Back to the vertex for counting again. Over two, up eight. On both sides. And if I go back to the vertex, I can see that if I go over three, I'm definitely not going to get up 18 on here. So we'll just do with these ones. Have to have as many points as you can fit on your graph, at least five. Okay, um, and our axis of symmetry, right through the middle of that guy. Okay. Now, axis of symmetry, remember, is x equals, and it only gets moved if we had a move right or left. We only had a shift up. So since we didn't have a right or left, then it stays zero. This one moved because it had a shift right three. We've already done the domain because that's the domain of every parabola ever. And so now we just need to do range. The range Looks like if I move my pen up, the first thing I hit is negative one. So it's gonna be Y something with negative one. Since it's above negative one, it's gonna be greater than or equal to. If it were below, it would be less than or equal to. Now, does this one have a maximum or a minimum? Well, it looks like since it opens up, it's going to have a minimum. All of them that open up have a minimum. And the minimum, remember, is the y value of your vertex. So negative one. Positive one. Who did this? Who's doing this? That's positive one. I don't know where I got that negative one. I apologize. Positive one because it's up one, up one, up one. Did you notice that all of those y values are the same? Let's continue and see if that pattern holds true. Okay. Next, write the function that represents each transformation, identify the vertex, describe how to graph, graph it, give the line of symmetry, give the domain range, and minimum or maximum value. Fun. Okay, so it looks like I have first a stretch vertically by a factor of three, then I have left four, and then I have up five. Okay, well, I've got this fabulous little f of x. Remember, if you're not sure what goes where, woo, you can turn it over here. A is going to be a stretch or compression, because that's what goes with A. H is going to be right and left, because that's what goes with H. K is going to be up and down, because that's what goes with K. All right, so first thing, I need to see if I have a stretch or a compression. Do I? Yep, I have a stretch of three, so that goes there. Do I have any reflections? If I had a reflection um, over the x-axis, it would go out here. 
if I had a reflection over the Y axis, it would go in front of my X. Since I don't have either one of those, just get my X in there. Then remember inside with the X goes right or left. I have a left four, but left inside here, remember changes its sign. And then I have an up five. These ones do not change their sign. Okay, so that's what I've got going on. So my vertex is opposite of the inside and then after outside stays the same. So opposite of this is your x value, that is your y value. So my vertex is at negative 4, positive 5. There we go. Negative 4, positive 5. The line of symmetry is x equals negative 4. Because remember, your line of symmetry goes where your left and right goes. Then the, mm, well, let's graph it before we try to do these things. So normally our pattern goes over 1, up 1, over 2, up 2. Nope, not 2. That's absolute value. Over 3, up 2. 9. And it changes only if we have a reflection or a stretch. I have a stretch of 3, so all of these are going to get multiplied by 3. So I'll go up 3, I'll go up 12, and I'll go up 27. I'm not sure <laughs> how many of these are going to fit on the graph. Let's see. So if I go over 1, up 3 on both sides, Sure doesn't look like I'm going to get up 12. Okay, so what that means is you see this line and this line, I can't go past those. It's going to be real tall and skinny. And you still have to try to round the bottom there. And draw in your axis of symmetry. It should be a dashed line. I don't know if I mentioned that. I don't think I did. Axes of symmetry are always dashed lines. Um, remember, it's at negative 4. Oh, we already wrote that. Okay, this one again is up, upright, so it's going to have a minimum. The minimum value is the y value of our vertex, which is 5. Domain, same as always. Negative infinity is less than x, which is less than infinity, or all real numbers. And then range is going to be y is greater than or equal to and again, the y value of our vertex. So make sure you're getting your vertex right because you're going to use it in a couple other places. So if that's wrong, then we're in trouble. Okay, next one. This next one, oh, well, let's make sure we did all the things. Identify the vertex. Yep. Uh, write the function. Yep. Identify the vertex. Yep. Describe how to graph. There we go. Graph it. Line of symmetry. Domain range, minimum, maximum. Yep, we're good. Okay, next one, it might be good if you tried to pause this and do it yourself as we go along. Okay, first thing I see is we've got a compression by a factor of two-thirds. We've got something new. We've got a reflect over the x-axis. We've got a shift right one, and we've got a shift up eight. We've got a lot of stuff going on. So f of x equals. Now, which one is going to go first? Reflect over the x-axis or factor of two-thirds? Well, let's flip back and see. Reflect over the x-axis looks like it's the one that goes outside the parentheses. So it will actually go first in front of any stretch or compression. So it's kind of the leader of the pack. Anytime you have a reflect over the x-axis, it will go very first. Then your stretch or compression. Then your x inside the parentheses the squared. Any right or left goes inside here with this x. Right is actually going to be minus 1, and up 8 does what you expect, plus 8. Okay, so my vertex is going to be 
opposite of what's inside with my x. So it says negative 1, and my vertex I'm going to write 1. And then the outside, after the parentheses, does what it says. So this is going to be 8. So positive 1, 8. Oh, this one's going up. We're in trouble. We don't have much graph yet. Left, I mean. The line of symmetry is the same as my right or left shift. So it's x equals 1. And then how am I going to graph this? OK, well, normally I go right 1, up 1, right 2, up 4, right 3, up 9. But with this stuff I've got going on, some stuff is going to change. OK, this reflection, if you flip over here, Reflection over the x-axis says it makes the ups go down. So any of these ups here are now going to get turned into downs. Okay, so that negative over the x-axis makes the ups go down. Then also we have a compression of two-thirds, which means all of our ups are going to get multiplied by two-thirds. This is going to be fun. Okay, 1 times 2 thirds is 2 thirds. 4 times 2 thirds, so we do 4 times 2, that's 8 thirds. And 9 times 2, that's 18 thirds, which is actually 6. <laughs> so simplify that so you can figure out what that is. 2 thirds as a decimal is 0.6 repeating, if that's helpful for you to graph. 8 thirds as a decimal, um, 6, 2 and two-thirds, so 2.6 repeating. All right, so let's graph these. So I'm going to go right one down two-thirds, so 0.6, and do the same thing on the left. Then I'm going to go right two and down one two and two-thirds. Then I'm going to go right 3 and down 6. 6 on both sides. Okay, make sure you go all the way to the edge of the graph and then put arrows. Remember your line of symmetry goes through the vertex dash line, arrows up and down. It's x equal 1 because that's the x value of your vertex. This one finally has flipped upside down. So finally we have a maximum. The maximum value is the y value of your vertex, which is 8. Domain, same thing it always is. Negative infinity is less than x, which is less than infinity, or all real numbers. And the last thing is the range. Now, always before, it's been greater than because it's gone up. This one's going down, though. So it is going to be less than or equal to. And it's less than or equal to the y value of the vertex. Oh, I didn't explain why this was um, or equal to. It's or equal to because this has a point that you can actually touch. Now these ones, can you actually touch infinity? Is our graph actually touching infinity? No, that's not a number you can touch. So that's why these ones are don't have an or equal to, and this one does, because this one you can actually touch 8 and go, yep, it's right there. My graph touches it. OK, so um, that's how you graph this one. And we're going to be done for the day, and we'll finish this up later. Good luck on your assignment.